November 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation, Chapter 1, from the New Testament. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must happen very soon. He made it clear by sending his angel to his servant John, who then testified to everything that he saw concerning the word of God and the testimony about Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy aloud, and blessed are those who hear and obey the things written in it, because the time is near. From John to the seven churches that are in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from he who is, and who was, and who is still to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from among the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to the one who loves us and has set us free from our sins at the cost of his own blood, and has appointed us a kingdom as priests serving his God and Father. To him be the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. Look, he is returning with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes on the earth will mourn because of him. This will certainly come to pass. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is still to come, the All-Powerful. I, John, your brother and the one who shares with you in the persecution, kingdom, and endurance that are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony about Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day when I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, Write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned to see whose voice was speaking to me, and when I did so, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands was one like a son of man. He was dressed in a robe extending down to his feet, and he wore a wide golden belt around his chest. His head and hair were as white as wool, even as white as snow, and his eyes were like a fiery flame. His feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. He held seven stars in his right hand, and a sharp, double-edged sword extended out of his mouth. His face shone like the sun, shining at full strength. When I saw him, I fell down at his feet as though I were dead. But he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. And the one who lives, I was dead, but look, now I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and of Hades. Therefore, write what you saw, what is, and what will be after these things. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches. God, I can't believe that we're recording the last book of the New Testament for the Daily Video Bible Project. It has just been an amazing year getting to immerse myself in your word. I always love reading your word, but it's just been crazy awesome getting to spend this much time with you and probably the other thing I learned this year uh, was the fact that my life before this year before the extra 730 videos came into my life before the extra 30 hours a week on top of my 60 hour work weeks showed up I realize that if I'm able to find 30 hours in my schedule to do daily video Bible every week, then I have a lot of stuff that's going to burn up in the fire uh, in the end. 
And I thank you, God, for putting Daily Video Bible into my life and, and turning all that fluff, all that surface stuff that's just going to burn up into something that's actually for your kingdom. And you've truly come in and blessed Daily Video Bible and shared it with so many people around the world. Uh, the stats on the site are just amazing how many people are watching and, and listening to your word, God. So thank you for all the multitude of blessings that I'm aware of and, and for all the blessings of the people who have been affected uh, by listening to your word through this project as well. Revelation is hard. <laughs> it's hard for believers. It's hard for unbelievers. Um, mostly because the imagery is odd. Uh, it was probably a little bit odd back then. Uh, but it's really odd to us because a lot of the symbolism we don't quite get. Um, and I pray that you help me find the right words to explain to the best of my ability. Uh, and what you want people to understand from Revelation. Um, share with them what needs to be known because there's a lot of this that people just argue about. It's one of the reasons I actually don't like this particular book. I guess I should say on the surface because a lot of Christians like to get into heated discussions about Revelation, about what it means, what it doesn't mean, what it means to the churches, what it means to us. Um, and the truth is, None of us know. None of us know for certain what revelation truly means. Uh, all the nuances and the details and in which order everything's going to happen. The one thing that we need to keep in mind is the end of the story. And the end of the story is you win. <laughs> sort of like peeking at the very last page of the book. I know you win, God. And so a lot of times when my friends are in big heated discussions about Revelation, I, I more get annoyed. I don't have a lot of patience, unfortunately, dealing with that. Because to me, there's nothing to argue about. Revelation, to me, shows me two things. Okay, three things. <laughs> Number one, that there are believers that are going to be persecuted. And the other group, there's only two groups... The other group are going to be the persecutors. That's what end of times is to me. That's the two people groups. The believers who will be persecuted. Not possibly will be persecuted. And then the persecutors. Um, and then the third thing that I do know. Is that you reign supreme. You are in control. You are sovereign over everything. And it couldn't be more clear. Than as we go through Revelation. And realize what you do to the devil himself and how you can find him and destroy him. Um, no matter what view you have on Revelation, that point is factual. So as we go through and read the next 20 some odd chapters of Revelation, there's a couple points that we can kind of hang our, our processes on so we can kind of follow along and of course, the first part that was presented in the reading today is the letters to the seven chosen churches. And these are letters written by you, uh, passed down through John, your disciple. And they say, uh, basically, you're screwing up. It's so clear and you're supposed to be my church. And so here's my commandments that you have to follow. Here is what you need to do. And those letters are incredibly powerful. And I'm, I'm really excited to get to... Uh, the content of those letters. Then we also know that there's a lot of, again, imagery that shows up detailing different things and connecting different things to historical times. We know that there's seals. People are pretty familiar with the seals in Revelation. We know there's a trumpet, of course. Uh, there's a woman. There's a dragon, uh, beast, dragon and beast. Uh, there's bulls, definitely talked about of course Armage Armageddon and then there's kind of this other section where that dragon is destroyed which we know is the devil um, everyone who is in a grave rises there is a judgment and then all things are new now how those play out historically wise if they already happened in the past if they're happening currently if they happen in the future um, what happens at the end of times? Do all the believers get pulled up to heaven and everybody else is having to deal with the destruction down here? 
are believers included in the destruction down here? What does that look like? Um, all of these bits and pieces that, again, people like to argue about, aren't defined by you in Revelation. And you're pretty clear in the Bible that there's certain things that we just don't need to know about. Uh, that your ways are higher than our ways. Um, your way of thinking is different than our way of thinking. And, and I'm personally totally fine with that. Again, all I need to know is that you're sovereign, uh, that I am, I am serving a God that is so big that eventually he'll conquer everything uh, intentionally uh, according to his timing. So God, um, I love Revelation for what it says. Uh, I don't or truly appreciate uh, the variations of, of Revelation. Uh, there is only one person in the entire world who knows when the end of times will happen, and that's you. Nobody else knows, uh, including the devil, uh, interestingly enough. <laughs> Can you imagine his job of trying to keep up, going, okay, is this the century it's going to happen, and putting people in place to get ready for it, and then, oh, it doesn't happen, and then the next century, putting evil people in place, and, um, and, and we'll read about those uh, situations and that particular person we'll read about in Revelation as well. What I love is uh, while we're reading most of Revelation we're also going to be recording most of Daniel uh, for the Old Testament side and and Daniel actually connects a lot of the pieces to Revelation. So God I thank you for making it end up that way that people are going to be able to connect some dots between Old Testament prophecy and what happened in this New Testament writing. Now in uh, Revelation, in this first chapter, we actually receive uh, one of the first of seven blessings uh, in the book of Revelation. And John shares it in verse 3. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy aloud. And blessed are those who hear and obey the things written in it, because the time is near. So I know, God, that it's not enough for me to read these words aloud to people. Uh, and it's not enough for them to hear me read those words, but we need to obey them. And there's some incredibly powerful words in Revelation uh, that I pray that you will allow me to do justice to. Uh, some very clear black and white passages about what you expect of us as true saved believers. Um, this isn't wishy-washy stuff. This isn't gray area. You are very clear with the churches, what they have done wrong and what your expectations are. So the blessing comes from the hearing or the speaking and the obeying. God, allow us to hear your word. Don't let us get all caught up and sidetracked with imagery that might make not might not make sense to us. Help us to not get caught up in the arguments for argument's sake, um, having to do with different opinions of this particular book, but allow us to be swept up in your pageantry, in your sovereignty, sovereignty, in your lordship over everything. God, you reign today, <laughs> you have reigned always, and you will reign always in the future. Allow us to learn so much more about the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of everything. In your son's name I pray, amen.